Hello, my dear lovely friends, here in old little town of Bellingham, Washington. This is one of the first parts of a video I'm trying to do to talk about my relationship with my one and only true love. He was a man by the name of Arthur Rosenau. This first video is going to talk about my life and Arthur's life before we met at the Metropolitan Community Church in San Francisco. So here we go with tears, joys, and laughter. In an unfortunate turn of Arthur's life, in 1953, which coincidentally was the year I was born, Arthur Rosenau was sent to prison in Kansas for loving another man. He was a victim of the sodomy laws. Why can't I be free to love the man I truly love? Why can't love be free like a bird that soars above the rainbow? As I look through the bars of this cage, up to the rainbow, where I feel my love yearning to be free. Oh, why can't you let me go? Well, here I am at our home in the 1960s. I am the little boy in the red shirt on the left hand side of this picture. I wish to thank my siblings, Chris, Susan, Nancy, and Steridessa, for their generously allowing me to use this photograph. Here you see an animation of our lovely home decorated for Christmas. Yes, I was a little boy who decorated our home with lights along with some of the neighborhood. At about the same time, I was taking television sets, broken TV sets from the town dump in Winchester to learn electronics and start my beautiful, illustrious career in electronics engineering. Arthur was finally released from prison for the last time. Like many gay men, Arthur knew the place to be was San Francisco, a place that's safe for gay men, safer than states like Kansas and many other states. Along with Arthur, there was a gay couple on the bus fleeing from a very repressive so off we go into the sunset to San Francisco and New Horizons. Arriving in San Francisco on the bus from Kansas, Arthur most likely found a cheap residence hotel similar to this one. Now this hotel we're looking at is the old American Hotel here in Bellingham, Washington in the 1950s. Many of these hotels did not have a front door and the desk was not open after about 7 p.m. Therefore, some fine guests who could not afford a room helped themselves in the staircase or the sofas. 
These young men, by the way, helped form Arthur's first little family during the beginning of his time in San Francisco. Now let's very quietly and gently walk up the front stairs, not disturbing this, this man's sleep. The hallway was very simple with old paintings. There's another man sleeping. The hotel did cover their sofas in plastic covers because some of us were not very careful with our personal hygiene, if, I, if you know what I mean. Here's Arthur's room. You'll be meeting Arthur a little later in this video. In the meantime, Tabor Academy, which was my high school, was a private prep school. Unfortunately, they did not have vocational classes in electronics. My revenge was volunteering to, hand, to be responsible for all the electronic equipment on campus to keep it running. You have to understand at that time, Tabor had no endowment and they were living hand to mouth. So the money I saved Tabor by fixing all their electronics as a student was very, very important to them. An example of this work was restoring two beautiful Hammond B3 model organs that Tabor owned. You can see me here using my homemade oscilloscope and an audio oscillator fixing one of those organs with Tabor Academy who had absolutely no money to have them professionally restored. After Tabor Academy, I went to Worcester Polytechnic Institute. The bottom image is the Electrical Engineering Laboratory Training Electrical Panel. The top in image is interesting. When I was the Chief Engineer of WICN Radio, our Campus 2000 Watt radio station, the transmitter was very dirty and I ended up taking the transmitter into the shower with me to wash it, just like a mother bathing her child. My first job upon graduation was an engineer for WCBB TV in Lewiston, Maine. This is the master control room. I made a mistake. If you look at the far right, you see a small shelf. I left a copy of the Boston Gay Community News on that shelf and forgot about it when I left my shift. The chief engineer found it and he was not happy at all. And I came within a razor's edge of getting fired. So I decided to do as Arthur did, head west to San Francisco. To explain some of the things that happened to me in San Francisco, let's go back and explain a little bit of context. Throughout my entire life, I had a fashion fetish in clear plastic. I loved to make and wear clear plastic raincoats and clear plastic clothing. Although I must say I am not an exhibitionist, I always wore colorful clothing under my clear plastic as you see here. My own perception that the LGBTQ community in San Francisco would accept all persons was incorrect. My fetish in clear plastic proved to be too much trouble for much of that community. I was kicked out of bars and clubs only because I was wearing a clear plastic raincoat over my colorful clothing. Here you see me standing alone, being lonely in front of the crowd of Castro clones in front of the stud bar. Their energy told me I am not welcome. To 
the gods on high, help me, help me find love. Another interesting footnote with San Francisco. I went to the California Academy of Sciences to watch the Laserium show in the planetarium. You have to understand, I am an extremely curious person, and I love to learn. When I asked the laser projectionist how the equipment works, he rudely said to me, it's none of your business. Then he almost threatened to call security on me, just because I was curious. Oh, my dear museum, why are you throwing me away? You know darn well that a museum is to use its collection to educate and answer questions. Why do you insist on breaking your own ethics to throw me away? I take this gut-wrenching and horrible experience in San Francisco as an extremely important lesson that I take with me to use during my current career at the Spark Museum of Electrical Invention here in Bellingham, Washington. I have come to realize that I was really not alone, for I was always with the cosmos. The cosmos and its rainbows and stars have always been coming down to caress me and show me their sincere, total, and illuminating well, the cosmos did come through, and I received my gift. Here you see myself meeting and shaking hands with Arthur Rosenau for the very first time in the spring of 1978 during the coffee hour after a service at the Metropolitan Community Church in San Francisco, which ends this first video. I hope you enjoyed it, but I do want to tell you that although Arthur has died in 1981, it is his love that still reaches down to me from the cosmos that is guiding me in putting these videos together as a gift to you all. Yes, although he died in 1981, his love is still coming down to me from the cosmos. So, with that, if you see me on my bicycle here in Bellingham, if you see me skating at Zwenich Park, if you see me dancing in the weight room and the gym at the Whatcom YMCA, or if you see me swimming at our beautiful Taylor Street swimming dock at Boulevard Park, or finally, if you see me at the Spark Museum, please say hi and tell me how you liked this video and of course, I am open to all comments and all questions. I love you all.